Hey, yo, what's up guys? Baby Bear 4812 coming at you one more time. Today we're going to be doing the, the vertical order traversal of a binary tree. Now, just a, a quick heads up, I think this problem comes up twice on Leak Code. One is problem 987, uh, the other is problem 314. They're the same thing. There, there's one tiny little trivial difference, but uh, if you're looking for the solution to either one of those, you've come to the right place. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll go ahead with 987. Um, no particular reason. Asked by Facebook and Bloomberg pre predominantly, excuse me, Amazon, Google as well. Um, a lot of downvotes, I'm not sure why. Uh, I'm not sure why, I think it's a really good question. And it's weird, it kind of challenges the way we think about looking through trees because we you know, we know our breadth first searches and our, our depth first in order, pre-order, post-order, all that stuff. But what about actually looking like, you know, column by column, uh, which is weird. Like they're not, trees are not made to be looked at that way. However, it's a good question because it flexes our understanding of anything and everything about trees, I guess. And so let's, uh, let's see if we can tackle this one, but I think we'll be good. So uh, given a binary tree, we need to return the vertical order traversal of its node values. Um, for each node at position x, y, we're told that left and right children will be at x minus 1 and y minus 1 respectively. Sorry, x minus 1, y minus 1, and x plus 1, y minus 1. Uh, in a nutshell, what that basically means is this, is we are, if I give you a, uh, oops, if I give you a node, and I give you two more nodes, let's pretend that this node, we'll say that the root node by default is at the kind of the origin or zero, zero. Uh, this one is one unit to the left, which would be an X value of negative one and a Y value of negative one as well because it's one unit down. Conversely, on the other side, this one is, is one unit to the right of the node, so it's uh, it's going to be uh, x value of one, and y value will be minus one. Does that make sense? That's basically what it's saying. Uh, we run a vertical line from x's negative infinity to positive infinity. Uh, whenever the vertical line touches some nodes, we report the value of the nodes from top to bottom. Okay. If two nodes have the same position, then the value of the node that is reported first is the value that is smaller. Okay, so we'll, we'll deal with that. That's a small detail we'll take care of at the end. Um, but otherwise, we need to return a non-empty, a list, excuse me, of non-empty reports in order of X coordinate. Every report will have a list of node values. So what does that mean? We see this tree. Starting from left to right, we're going top down. So we come across a nine first, okay? That's the only item we see in the column. And so we're going to input a an array with, with just that one item nine in it, into our, our bigger resultant array. Next column over, we get three, and then we see a 15. So we're gonna report 315, and that's gonna have its own array, again, like its own nested array within the, the larger result. Then we get this 20, then we get the seven. Um, and again, they, they kind of suggested as well, we can assume the root node is at position zero, zero. I think that's most intuitive anyway, so I kind of went ahead with that. Um, I think you guys follow. I think you guys follow. This one goes four, uh, we see the two, and then the one, the five, and the six are, are all kind of in the same column because you'll notice that our X value goes negative one, and then it goes positive one to the right. So, sorry, starts at zero, goes down by one value of X, goes up by one value of X. So technically they're, they're kind of in a column even though it doesn't necessarily visually look like that. Um, so we have the one, five, six, then the three, and then the seven. And that's pretty much it. So. So how do we do this, All right? So I think I think the question makes sense, but it's like, what the heck do we do? Let's think about it this way. I know that I can get, so if I, just kind of create a new one here. Um, if I draw some number of, of, of nodes, doesn't really matter. Um, maybe I'll draw one here, I'll draw one more over there. What I can potentially do here is I can just say, and, and this is kind of where, where my head initially went. What if I do one complete pass through of this entire array, or excuse me, of this entire tree, and I, I simply store the coordinates and the node, okay? At the end of the day, we're going to want to look through all the coordinates in order of increasing x's. So of increasing x, maybe that doesn't make so much sense. Our first condition is we need to sort by increasing x values. Second, we need to sort by 
decreasing y values, okay? So we're going to want to decrease, so from top down. Uh, and thirdly, they told us that if the x and y are equal, that we want to return uh, the, the smaller value first, I believe, and let me just make sure. Uh, the value of the node that is, uh, excuse me, the value of the node that is uh, reported first is the value that is smaller, right? So we're gonna wanna take the value and do that in uh, smaller first, so increasing order, okay? These are the three things we're going to need to do. Now, I think definitely the most sensible approach um, and I, I believe it's actually the most optimal one. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys, if you guys think you can do a bit better than this, but I, I believe this is optimal as it gets. We could do one full walkthrough of this, of this node tree. And as we do that, we can store each node with its X and Y coordinates in, inside of our own array or list. Um, then we can sort it by these three parameters. We can first sort by X, then we sort by Y decreasing, and then by value increasing. After we do that, then we can we can get a bit clever on how we walk through that sorted array and actually um, append those values together if they if they kind of fall in the same column or not. Uh, but ultimately, that's the approach that we're going to take is we're going to do one full walk through this entire tree, we're going to add every node with its x and its y coordinate, we're going to sort that array. So we get everything in order the way we like it, strictly following this order. Um, and then we're going to append all that at the end to a resultant array. And so the key thing to kind of realize here is that we've got, you know, maybe I, if I call this x, y, so again, we'll default those to zeros here, but these are x, y. Every time I go to the left, I'm gonna be calling x minus one, y minus one. Every time I go to the right, I'll be doing x plus one, y minus one. Since these are all relative values, what we can do is we can create a, a recursive call that'll walk through the entire tree, append all the values really in any order we grab them, and then sort them all at the end. So it'll run in, I guess, n log n time um, in, in linear space. So I hope that makes sense. That's gonna be the, the big picture approach that we're gonna take. Um, any questions about this, let me know down below. I'm happy to elaborate. But I, I think, as always, we're kind of in a good position to, to check the code out and to see where that gets us. So. Uh, what I want to see here is, I guess, a couple things. First off, we can say if we're not really given a root, we can simply um, we can return. Oh, I guess it's not none. I guess it'll be an, an empty array. Okay. Next, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to collect all the coordinates and the respective nodes, or maybe the nodes and the respective coordinates. So what I'll do is I'll I'll call some variable coordinates and I'll say self dot get coordinates. We're going to we're going to build this function in just a second. And we're going to need to pass a couple of items in there. Um, and so let's let's think about what we're going to want or let's let's think about what we're going to want to put in there. So I'm going to want to get the coordinates of this tree that start at the root. And at any given point we said if we're going to the the left, we're going to want to call like an an x minus 1, y minus 1 or an x plus 1 and y minus 1 when we are uh, when we're going to the right. So I'm gonna to need to pass along some x and y values through my calls. Uh, our root begins at zero, zero, so I think that makes the most sense. And finally, these actual coordinates are gonna to need to be stored in some data structure. Uh, just because we're gonna be sorting it, I think the easiest one will be will be an array. You could make the argument that we could put this in like a, in a dictionary in some sort of key value pairs, but uh, I think this would be the easiest one to do again because we're gonna to need to take these items and then, and then actually sort them by three parameters actually. So I'm gonna run with the array here for this reason. And so we're, uh, what we can do is we can, we can essentially do uh, as follows. We can, we can say, let's define get coordinates as a, as a function. I'll take a root, an x, a y, and I'll, I'll, I'll call the actual array coordinates. And so within this recursive call, we're again, we're going to want to, um, to consider two items. One is gonna be the terminal condition, and the second is the recursive relationship. The terminal condition, we can say, if I come across a null node, we can't really do anything with it, so we're just gonna return whatever coordinates we have so far. So say if not root, we're going to wanna to return coordinates. Otherwise, if we actually land on a root, well, then I can say this. I can say that uh, coordinates, let me make sure I spelled that right. I misspelled it so many times when I was uh, practicing this problem for the first time. Uh, we're gonna to wanna to append some sort of array that's going to hold uh, the x y value, the y value, and the value of the node itself. So what I'll do is I'm just going to append x 
uh, y and root dot val. So maybe we can we can keep a note here and to say that coordinates is going to take the form x1, y1, val1. Then we'll have something like x2, y2, val2, and so on and so forth. I'm leaving this here for reference. So when we're looking at it after, just say it makes a bit more sense when we're, when we're checking it out. So we're pending on to coordinates, okay? At, at the end of this function, we're going to want to return coordinates for sure. But uh, we also want to check out what the, the left and right hand side are going to give us too. So what I'll do is I'm going to say uh, this coordinates array, we'll set it equal to whatever we get now from this call when we, when we recursively call this function on itself. And we're going to want to call, let's say, the left left value first. So if we call root dot left, we are going, well, one value to the left, which means x is decreasing by one. And since we're going down, y is also decreasing by one. And of course, we're passing in the coordinates here. Let me maybe give us a bit more space. Should be easier. And I'm going to do something similar here on the right hand side. So I'll say, we'll call the function on itself. Now we'll take the right hand side. And again, since we're going to the right now, we're going to increase x by one. So we'll say x plus one. Y is still, uh, y is still going down by one because we're traveling down and we're passing in the coordinates we've got so far. So if we pass in, you know, if our, if our, our root doesn't have a, a left or right value, we're simply going to return the array coordinates and, and that'll update that value accordingly. Um, and similarly, same thing here as well. If not, we're going to append the append that, that value that we're looking at, that node value that we're looking at with this coordinates. And then we're gonna keep checking the subtrees and eventually just return the return the coordinates upwards as we jump out of the stack. And, and finally, that's how we are actually going to get an array of all of our coordinates. So we, we do our error checking, we jump in here, we, and, and this function will give us all of the nodes values with their coordinates each of which will be represented in its own array. So the coordinates themselves are one bigger array, then we have nested smaller arrays for each node. Now, this is kind of the, not really the make it or break it moment, but one of them is we actually need to sort this thing properly. So the, the syntax we'll kind of see here is, is Python specific. So it'll, it'll look slightly different if you're working in a different language, but within Python, what we can do is sort it in place. Uh, so if I spell coordinates, right? And I want to generally this would this will kind of sort them in, in increasing order. We've got multiple values that we need to sort by here. So what we've got to do is we've got to use the lambda functions, right? If you're not familiar with them, let me know down below. Um, maybe I'll make a separate video just talking about how to use lambda functions in general and, and for sorting purposes in Python. Uh, but we, we need to set a key equal to lambda and I'll, I'll call it X. That's kind of g generically what we need in these items. And I'm going to want to sort by this value X, but so if X here is going to represent one, uh, one, of these, one of these nested arrays, and so this combination of all these arrays is going to be shuffled around based on, in our case, three different parameters. Those parameters were X, Y, and the value. Remember, we have them right here. In X in increasing order, Y in decreasing order, and value in increasing order. So what does that do for us? Well, uh, if I wanted to, let's say, just sort by the X values, I could say something like X of at zero. So remember, our zero, item in any, any given moment represents our X coordinate, okay? So this would sort everything by X coordinate. Now, we've got multiple parameters, so we're gonna have to put this in parentheses, and, and we're gonna have to sort by first, we said by X value, right? So that's X at zero. Then, by Y value, which is X at one. However, we said that we wanna sort it in decreasing order for Y, right? We wanna go from top down, so we're going to wanna go by negative X of one. Finally, if two items have the same coordinate, we are going to want to sort by the value, right? In increasing order, which is just going to be X of two. And so this line right over here in Python will do our sort. And this is what makes it n log n. We need to take that n log n time to actually sort this thing by these parameters. Um, and now essentially what we've got is, is we've got, um, We've got the following. We we basically sorted this thing, and and let me maybe I will kind of actually jot it out here. Um, the nine occurs at negative one, negative one. So negative negative one nine. Then we've got the three and then the fifteen. So the three is at zero zero. So zero zero three. The fifteen is at zero negative two, zero negative two fifteen. Uh, twenty is at one negative one, one negative one twenty, and finally we've got. Uh, two, negative two, seven. And so 
just so you guys can keep me honest here, uh, we're sorted by X value. See how they're all increasing? We got negative one, zero, zero, one, two. Maybe I can zoom it in here. For the Y values, negative one, zero, uh, negative two, negative one, negative two. So after we've sorted for the X's, if there are any equal X's, like we have in this case, we're sorting in decreasing by Y's. So uh, zero and then negative two. Uh, and finally, if, if there are any cases where the X and the Y are both equal to each other, we will uh, we sort by increasing by value. So this is where we're at right now. Now, I'm gonna wanna have some sort of result array. I'm gonna do some funny manipulation, not even manipulation, but I'm gonna somehow pop my answers into here and I'm going to want to return the result. And the, the easiest way to do that, in my opinion, would be as follows. Um, I wanna check that for any given node that I'm looking at within our, our representation here, and I, I've added these indices, uh, just above so we can we can kind of track what we're looking at in any given point. I want to say that if I'm looking at a, a certain node within our representation of it, and it is in the same column as the previous item, then we want to mash those together. Okay, so I always want to look one item previously. Make sure I don't go out of bounds or do anything weird like that. I'm just going to take our our first initial set of coordinates and put in the value, and, and that'll have its own bucket. So. Uh, again, since this result is going to be like a nested array, I'm going to have to put that in its own own bucket internally over here. Um, now, what that allows to do is to loop through uh, our our coordinates from one, not from zero, up until the the end of the coordinates. And at any given point, we want to ask ourselves again: Is the node I'm looking at in the same bucket as the as the one I just put in? And so, two two nodes are in the same bucket bucket if they lay in the same column. And for two nodes to lay in the same column, they need to have equivalent X values, right? If you have the same X value, you're in the same column. So what we can say is if coordinates of, of I at zero, that's equal to coordinates at uh, I minus one of zero. And again, the zero here represents the X one. Then in that case, we want to simply take a result, look at the last element we had uh, and append to it coordinates I of two, the value. Otherwise, if this is a new column entirely, we're gonna to wanna to take the result and we're gonna append to it a new bucket. And within that bucket, the first entry is gonna be coordinates of I2. So what that means for us is this. If I'm looking at this example here, uh, right over here, when I come to my, when we get the nine, so the nine we kind of input it by default. Next item I'm gonna see is three. I'm gonna ask myself, is three in the same column as nine? Okay, so within the code, we, we see here, no, it's not. So within the code, we're going to say is three in the same column as nine? No, it is not. So in the results, we're going to append a new bucket that contains the value three. We take a next step forward. Now we're looking at 15. We ask ourselves, is 15 in the same column as three? Yes, it is. So we will take the last bucket that we have, that last column within the result array and append to it this value 15. Then we check the 20, which is in its own column, so we end up back down here, and from there, it's it, it's smooth sailing. And that's about it. Let me run this and make sure I didn't I didn't really mess you guys over. Um, and I think we're all good here. And ta-da, there we go. So, uh, as I said, really interesting problem. Quite popular, it seems, with, uh, I think it was, was it Bloomberg and Facebook that I said? Yeah, Facebook and Bloomberg. Uh, not an easy problem. It really it challenges the way we think about traversing trees and our start our understanding of them in general. Um, the sort is a bit tricky. I'd also argue that this part down here is a bit tricky to really like append it all properly, but it's manageable overall. I, I really think it's a it's a still a digestible problem. Um, as always, let me know if you have any questions down below. Happy to answer them. Whatever else you guys need, if, uh, if you need help with maybe with mock interviews or answering certain different kinds of questions, let me know down below. I'm happy to help you guys however way I can. And yeah, I just wanna see you guys succeed and, and crush it out there. So, see you guys next time. Peace.